Omagyan, Timirandasya, Gnajana Salakaya, Chaksu Unmilita Mena Tasmai Sri, Guruvena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Manobi Stam Stabditam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa, Gidam Mayam Dadati Swam Padantikam. One day, hum, Shigaro, Shigata, Padakamalam, Shigarun, Vaishnavams, Chasi, Rupam, Sagrajatam, Sahagana, Dragana, Tam, Vitam, Tam, Sajivam, Sadvaitam, Sarvadutam, Parijana, Sahitam, Krishna, Chaitanya, Devam, Sri Radha, Krishna, Padam, Sahagana, Lalita, Sri Vishakam, Vitam, Scha. He Krishna, Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namos Tate. Tapta Kanchana Godangi Radhe, Brindavane Sudhi, Rikabhanu Suti Devi, Pranamami Hari Priye. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prastaya Bhutale, Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirasesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Sitarine Nava Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Shri Varsha Banabi Devi Daite Pukrikabdaye Krishna Sambanda Vigyanam Dayane Prabhave Namaha Madur Ojwala Premadya Sri Rupa Nuga Bhaktida Sri Goda Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostate Namaste Gorvani Sri Mortaye Dinatarine Rupa Nuga Virurapa Siddhanta Dvanta Harine Namo Gorda Kishwaraya Saksad Vairagya Mortaye Vipalamba Asambode Padambo Jayate Namaha Namo Bhakti Vinodaya Satchidananda Namine Gauda Shakti Sarupaya Rupanuga Parayate Gauda Vibhava Bhumes Tvam Nirdisesha Sajanapriya Vaishnava Sarvabhoma Sri Jagannathaya Te Namaha Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhaktarinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. Every December is the, the appearance day of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. Falls around this time of the month. <coughs> um, so we'll speak a little bit about this Paramahansa Vaishnava. <coughs> Um, his life is quite interesting, detailed. There was one r book written about his life, which is called Ray of Vishnu, done by one devotee named Rupa Vilas Prabhu. This book was done at least 30 years ago, maybe even more. <clears throat> And it's a glorification on the life of Bhakti Siddhanta. The Ray of Vishnu title is very significant because Bhakti Siddhanta is an eternal associate of the Supreme Lord. He's a Nitya Siddha. He's not Sadhana Siddha or Kripa Siddha. He's Nitya Siddha. He's a person who came as a missionary to bring Krishna consciousness around the world. He came on the, on, the, on the instructions of Lord Chaitanya to pave the way for the Golden Age or to, re to reawaken the Golden Age, which had been lost after the disappearance of Lord Chaitanya. Bhakti Vinoda Kaur and Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati both were fundamental in reawakening Lord Chaitanya's movement. Lord Chaitanya disappeared in the year 1534 AD, and his movement stayed strong for another 100 years, where many of his disciples were 
carrying on his mission. So that went up to about the middle of the 1600s, but gradually towards the end of the 1600s and the beginning of the 1700s, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. His movement was lost. In other words, many of the devotees who had been the associates of Lord Chaitanya and those who were the disciples of the associates gradually started to leave the planet. And there was only very few of them left. And gradually the numbers were reducing. But one thing was increasing at the same time. There was these uh, groups of so-called followers of Lord Chaitanya. There were at least 13 different groups who claim allegiance to Lord Chaitanya's teachings and his mission. Nityananda Vamsa, Garanga Nagaris, these were some of the names of some of these groups. Aubal, Shakiveti, Jad Goswami, Sahaja, uh, so many. Um, Therefore, around the middle of the 1500s, I'm sorry, the middle of the 1800s, Bhaktivinoda Thakur came across a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. When he read that, formerly he was a shakta, worshipping the, what we say, the energy of the Lord. But after reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, he understood who Lord Chaitanya was, what was his mission, and he started to make an effort to bring back that mission. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was a magistrate working for the British government, but he was also absorbed in spreading Krishna consciousness everywhere. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had a big family. He had 10 children. You can see the picture with him and his wife and all the children. And the fifth son, born on February 6th, 19, I'm sorry, February 6th, 1874, at 3.30 in the afternoon, was Bhakti Siddhanta, who was that time known as Bimala Prashad. He received the name Bimala Prashad. And... Uh, We'll, read a, we'll mention a little bit about his life because it's quite interesting. Bhaktivinoda Thakur was the magistrate of, the, and he was also the caretaker of the Jagannath Temple, Jagannath Puri Temple at the time. And. Uh, when he had his son, his son was born, and he was born, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta was born in Jagannath Puri. Um, he, right after his son was born, he had to leave Puri for some business. And his wife, Bhagavi Devi, was taking care of the son. And it came around the time of the Rathiyatra. So Jagannath goes on his Rathiyatra, usually in the month of Jaist, which is the July. And so the Rathiyatra was on. And it's amazing that Jagannath's cart stopped right in front of um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur's house. And his wife, Bhagavitevi, because she was such a respectable lady, important lady, they let her come onto the cart, and she came onto the cart with the little son, who was only six months old at the time. She put the baby at the feet of Lord Jagannath, and at one point, while the baby was there, Jagannath dropped his garland, big garland, and it circled all around Bhakti Siddhanta. So, when she saw that, she was really amazed. Later on, when her husband, Bhakti Binota Kaur, came home, she told him what happened. And he could understand by hearing her explanation 
that he had been praying for Krishna to send somebody to help him with his mission of spreading Krishna consciousness. And now his prayer was answered in the form of his own son, Bhimala Prashad. He took very good care of his son as he grew up. The boy was a genius. The first pastime, aside from that um, statement we just heard, is that when, let's see here. Okay. Oh yeah, his birth was quite interesting too. Um, it's interesting to note that Whoever copied this really did it crazy. <laughs> that you? <laughs> it's all out of it's all out of water here. Wild. Okay. Uh, when he was born. <laughs> His the cord that connects the mother with the child is called the umbilical cord. And that cord was wrapped around the baby, Bhakti Siddhanta, like a Brahmin thread. <laughs> now that was noted, yeah, so when he was first born like that. After ten months they moved to a place called Ranagat in Nadia Bengal. Bhakti Siddhanta was, Bhakti, Bhakti Vinod was worshipping his deity and he would ask his little son, who was now four years old, to assist him. So one time they had some mangoes sitting on the table and it was boga, it was boga for the deity. Bhakti Siddhanta took the mango, he was a little boy, and he ate the mango. His father was a little concerned, oh, you should not have done that. That was meant for Krishna, that was boga. And so Bhakti, the boy, he became very, very concerned that he had committed a great offense. Although his father wasn't really heavy with him, but he understood I had taken the boga that was meant to be offered to the deity before the deity had received it. And so I am a fender. And he made, an, he made a vow when he was four years old, and he kept that vow his whole life, never to eat mangoes again. And mango season in India is like one of the best times of the year. The mangoes are so beautiful, soft. Uh, you've been there for mango season, huh? People go wild during the mango season. They make everything mango chutney, Mango drink, mango everything. <laughs> and uh, these mangoes are so beautiful and so tasty and sweet and, f and even ar aromatic. And sometimes his disciples or others would offer him a mango and he would say, I'm sorry, I cannot take, I'm an offender. So he kept that vow his whole life. You might think, well, you know, I could do that. Yeah, the mangoes you get here, which hardly ever come anyway. <laughs> but if you're in India during the mango season, which is in May, right? It starts in May, June. Beautiful succulent mangoes, and the shops are full of mangoes, and it's a whole experience. It's like mango mania. <laughs> mango mania. Yeah, it's like, yeah. It's, so he never, he broke, kept that vow his entire life. At the age of seven, he memorized the entire Bhagavad Gita, seven years old, and he could also recite the verses and give explanations. When he went to school, he never read any of the books in the school, <laughs> but he'd always get the best marks in class. <laughs> At the age of seven also, his father, 
gave him a deity of Kormadev, and he worshipped at that. He also gave him Tulsi beads and, a Hare, and taught him to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra along with the Nishringa Mantra also. Um, this was when he was seven years old. At the age of 11, when he was in school, he invented a kind of shorthand. You know what shorthand is? Shorthand is that when you have to take notes, you can do it in codes. And then later on, you take the codes and you expand it into the words. <laughs> so um, he created his own style of shorthand called Bicanto. And it was accepted as one of the authorized forms of shorthand. Mm -hmm. uh, when he was, when he entered college, he decided to make a group called the August Assembly. Uh, this when he was about 18 years old. Now, anybody to 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 join that group, you had to take a vow of celibacy for your whole life. <laughs> that was the condition for joining the group, and nobody joined <laughs> except him. <laughs> At the age of 16, he began to study his father's books, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, and he also wrote books on astrology, Surya Siddhanta, and other cosmological treatises on astronomy and astrology. Also, He would go, during the school times, he would go into the libraries and read all the books in the library. And he could remember his whole life Everything he ever read, he never forgot anything. He had such a sharp memory that anything he ever read, he never lost everything. <laughs> he became expert in all the six branches of Vedic knowledge. Um, there was some pressure to get him married, so he decided to leave college and not finish his education. That way he would be more or less qualified to get married. <laughs> Some kind of strict, tricky work. He, he. Um, in the year 1900, his father, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, told him to, you know, in order to practice Krishna consciousness, you have to have a spiritual master. So I think it's about time you find yourself a spiritual master. So he was about 36 years old at the time. No, no, he was 26, I'm sorry, 26. And uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, well, actually, there's one person. He comes to my lecture sometimes. He sits in the back. And Bhakti Siddhanta used to notice him also. And he would sit there and just listen. His name was Gorky Short, that's Babaji Maharaj. He said, I want you to take initiation from him. Now, Gorky Short, that's Babaji Maharaj, was not giving diksha to anyone. He had taken the vow never to accept disciples. And one of the qualifications or qualities of the great soul is that they never think they're advanced. They never think they're spiritual masters. They're qualified to lead others. So he made a vow, and many other great souls have done the same, never to take disciples. We even have devotees in our movement who are very learned and very advanced who do not take disciples. I won't mention their names, but that is an option you can too choose. <clears throat> I was pressured into taking disciples. <laughs> so. By you. <laughs> anyway, I'm still... As long as I don't get another one like you, then it's okay. <laughs> Once enough. <laughs> It's 
It's been a long haul, but... <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you're still here and I'm still here, so and I guess it's okay. <laughs> Because you're preaching, I went. I did everything I could to keep you in Krishna consciousness. It's because of your quality of wanting to enlighten other people with Krishna. It was because of that. That was your um, the quality that inspired me to Krishna. I have to do this, but she's a preacher, so there's no question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if anyone who preaches is recognized by Krishna immediately, they become very dear to Krishna. So I couldn't do anything else. <laughs> I had no choice. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs> No, oh, you're okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> the Bhakti Siddhanta, <clears throat> when he was about 18 also, <clears throat> his father, oh, when he went, his father told him to take initiation from Gorky Sardas Babaji Maharaj. So he went to see Gorkishore Das Babaji Maharaj, who was living under an overturned boat on the banks of the Ganges River, where people would go and uh, take care of the nature. No one go, would go there, because he didn't want to be a... He would say that the fragrance of this place, and it was a place where people would go to pass stool in your... It's, it's much better than the fragrance of the materialistic persons. <laughs> It's more desirable. <laughs> so that's how strict he was in his association. <clears throat> um, he approached, yeah, that's always his mood. And he approached Gorky Shortas Babaji marriage very respectful and instructed that his father had sent him to receive initiation. Gorky Shortas Babaji Maharaj said, well, I'm... I have taken a vow, I don't accept anyone for initiation. And he was very strong about it. So Bhakti Siddhanta left, and he was, at the time, he was still Bhimala Prashad. <clears throat> and then he went back to his father and told him, he said, no, no, you must, you must continue until he agrees to initiate you. <laughs> so he went back the next day, again petitioned him, Bhakti Siddhanta again, said, well, actually, I have to ask Lord Chaitanya. So you come back in three days, and then I'll let you know. And so he came back in three days, and then he paid his obeisances again to Gorky Shurdas Babaji, and he said, then they started to talk, and he said, did you ask Lord Chaitanya? He said, yes. Well, what did he say? He didn't answer. <laughs> so then Bhakti Siddhanta was really devastated. But then he said, you come back in three days and I'll ask him again. <laughs> so he came back in three days. Jai si pancha tattva ki jai. And this time, Bhakti Siddhanta was, uh, he decided, well, if I can't have a spiritual master, and this is the only one, this is my father has chosen this, and I have put my heart on, on his lotus feet, I cannot give it up. So he was, uh, <clears throat> he decided to commit suicide. And without a spiritual master, material, life in this world is, more than, is, is worse than suicide. So he uh, was decided that he was going to jump off a bridge, high bridge. He was walking, he was on the bridge, and Gorky Shordas Babaji just happened to be walking the other way. 
And then he came right up to him and said, I was just testing you, that's all. I can see you are very qualified. So he was his one and only disciple he ever accepted. And he got the name Sri Varshabhanabi Devi Daitaya Das. <laughs> Sri Varshabhanabi Devi Daitaya Das. And that's a name for Srimati Radharani. <clears throat> so he gave that beautiful name to Gorky Shordas Babaji, uh, to Bhakti Siddhanta. And then Bhakti Siddhanta started to preach, and he was preaching more and more. In the year 1911, um, of course in the year 1905, he went to Mayapur, and for nine months, I believe, he stayed in one little bhajan kutir, it was a little small hut. And he, you can see him with an umbrella. Sometimes it would rain and he would keep an umbrella over his head. Although he was inside the hut, the hut would sometimes would leak water when it was raining. <laughs> so he would keep an umbrella. And he made a vow to chant one billion names of God. One billion. And he, he did it. It took him nine years. <laughs> and during that time he was eating very little, just a little rice, that's about all. In the year 1911, Bhakti Vinod Thakur was very concerned. The Brahmins were con complaining and or saying that anyone who takes birth in the Brahmin family is automatically a Brahmin. But we know that it's Brahma, it's not by Janma, it's by Karma, it's by activity. And so Bhakti Vinod Thakur was trying to counteract their false understanding of what actually is a Brahmana. But the Brahmins were very powerful. So they decided, after some time, they organized a debate. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur would debate with the leading Brahmins is a Brahmin, what is, what is a Brahmin, and what are the qualifications of a Brahmin? So there was debate, was in 1911, was the first week in September, and it was at a place called Midnapur. But just before the event took place, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur came down with a very severe case of rheumatic fever. He was bedridden. So he couldn't go. And he was thinking, what will happen? But his son, who Sri Barshabhanavi Devi, said, my dear father, I have written, and he showed him a book that he wrote called Vaishnavas and Brahmanas. It's circulating in our society. You can find that book, Vaishnavas and Brahmanas by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And after going through the book, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur said, yes, you are the most qualified one, you go. And so he went on behalf of his father, and there was a big debate, and there were many people there. And it was about 50 Brahmanas. And so they asked Bhakti Siddhanta to speak first. And so he got up and he started to glorify, quoting all verses from the Shastras, what is the glory of a Brahmana? one who's born in a Brahmin family, he is the best of all persons. So many nice verses glorifying the Brahmins. And the Brahmins were listening, were thinking, huh, he's in our favor. <laughs> but then, after some time, after getting their favor, he changed and started to speak differently. And he said, yes, all these things are true, but, the, but Narada Muni quotes that everything is done by lakshanam, by quality not simply by birth. So, if a sudra is born, and a, if a person is born in a sudra family, but, is, but has Brahminical qualities, then he should be considered a Brahmin, and he's performing the activities of a Brahmin. But if a Brahmin born in a Brahmin family is not performing the activities, nor has the qualifications of a Brahmin, he should be categories accordingly. And so then he, his whole argument came to Janma 
and qualities instead of birth. And somebody was out late last night. <laughs> it's not so bad. I don't mind if you sleep in my class because most classes I put people to sleep anyway. So, but the deities are here, so that's not so good. To sleep in front of the deities. Yeah. <laughs> Prabhupada used to would say, sleep 13 hours a day, but don't sleep in class. <laughs> yeah, there's a, <laughs> yeah, he said that in one, in one lecture. <laughs> Prabhupada was really, he was, he was expert at waking up the devotees. <laughs> he would wake them up all the time. <laughs> That's another story. And so the debate went on, and when Bhakti Siddhanta gave his presentation, all the crowd that came as spectators, they started to say, Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. They started to glorify Bhakti Siddhanta. And they all came to come and touch his lotus feet to get some dust. But the police were there, they stopped everybody because the crowd was too big. They took Bhakti Siddhanta in another place, they washed his feet and they threw all the water on the crowd. <laughs> like that. So that was a great victory for the Vaishnavas. <laughs> hmm. um, in the year 1915, um, Bhakti Vinod Kaur left the planet. And then 15 months later, Gorky Shore Babaji Maharaj left the planet. So his two spiritual teachers, Bhaktivinoda Thakur and his spiritual master, both of them left the planet. So now he was pretty much alone, trying to turn around the groups and people in general who were criticizing Vaishnavas. They were saying Vaishnavas, they're all sentimentalists. They just, uh, they don't have any philosophy. They just sing and dance and that's all. They all, they don't know anything. We can't consider them to be topmost in their spiritual practice. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur had been fighting to reestablish Lord Chaitanya's movement. But he left premature, so Bhakti Siddhanta took up the, the mantle and then I believe a few years later, or re even around the same time, he initiated himself into sannyas. Mm -hmm. He gave himself sannyas initiation. That's never been done before. Usually you have a sannyas guru who does that. But he did, he did it. And uh, he gave himself the name Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, it's Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, like that. And it was accepted because he used the rituals from the Sri Sampradaya for initiating the sannyas order, like that. Okay, these are some things on Bhakti Siddhanta. Let's see. And then his preaching. Then he was thinking, I'm all alone. How will I be able to do anything? But in, in the same year after his spiritual master and his father left, he had a dream. And Panchatattva, the entire Panchatattva, appeared in his dream along with his father and his guru and also Jagannath Das Babaji. All, all of these personalities appeared in the dream and they all said the same thing. They gave him, you will be successful in preaching Krishna consciousness. Do not worry, there will be no thing, nothing in this world will hinder your progress in preaching Krishna consciousness. So he took assurance from that dream. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned he took, he 
sannyas in the age of 44, and using a picture of his Guru Maharaj. In that same year, he began his preaching in Calcutta, and he had a place called Uta Danga, Junction Road, and he would hold discourses on mostly on Chaitanya Charitamrita every night. And that's when our spiritual master, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada, met his spiritual master at that time. And um, Prabhupada, our spiritual master, he was a follower of Gandhi. He had refused to accept his diploma in college as a opposition to the non is in support of the non cooperation movement started by non by Gandhi. Around that year, nineteen twenty two, along with his good friend Narendra Nath Mulik, they were walking along, and Narendra Nath said, "Oh, there is a very nice saintly person. I think we should go listen to his lecture. He is about to give a lecture this evening." And our Srila Prabhupada said, oh, I know about all these gurus. <laughs> I'm not interested. You go. But Narendra Nath yeah, Mulik, he, Prabhupada said, he grabbed me and he dragged me. <laughs> and then they came to the place where Bhakti Siddhanta was, was there. And um, this is where his preaching really began. I'll just read some of the things that he'd done. In uh, 1922, Srila Prabhupada came to him and Prabhupada told him to go to the West and preach Krishna consciousness. They didn't even meet. Arshila Prabhupada paid his obeisances, and while he was still paying his obeisances, Bhakti Siddhanta looked at him and said, Oh, you are a very intelligent young man. You should take Krishna consciousness all over the world. Prabhupada said, I have, we haven't even met formally and he's already, ready, already given me a lifelong mission. <laughs> and Prabhupada got up and then he started to think, well, but then he responded, yes, but we are a dependent nation. Who will listen to our message? First we need Swaraj, we need independence from the British. Then we will have some status. Bhakti said, Dad, Santa said, this political party, that political party, it doesn't matter. Lord Chaitanya's mission is above all of these things. It, it is the need of the time. It has nothing to do with who's in charge. And so Prabhupada took that to his heart. And of course, after that time, and in between, at that time when he was going to the West in 1965, he was planning how to present Krishna consciousness to the Western mind. In, in 1924, on his 50th birthday, he uh, performed a, uh, called, he wrote something. Actually, he spoke it. Now, later on, it was written down. It was called, Be Humbler Than a Blade of Grass. And he talks about the spiritual master who sits upon the Vyasa sun. And he uses interesting language. He's, he reflects from the people who are looking. Look at that person. He is a big brute. Just see all of the eulogies and all of the nice words people are giving to him. Surely he's feeling great pleasure within his mind. <laughs> and so he, he uses conjecture to say that, yes, to take the position of a superior 
yes, I think I'm so, you know, people will say, oh, that person is, oh, thinks he's so great, he's so learned, he's so influential. But then after going through that whole thing, <clears throat> and he said, I am willing to go to hell in order to preach Krishna consciousness. So therefore, I am willing to accept, he uses the word perdition, which is some kind of condemnation, um, in order to fulfill the desire of Lord Chaitanya to spread Krishna consciousness. So after vilifying himself in that position, he ends by saying, I'm willing to accept whatever criticisms people say for the sake of preaching Krishna consciousness. In 1924, the same year, he went to Dasphameda Ghat and found the place that Lord Chaitanya spoke to Srila Rupa Goswami for 10 days, which was the basis of all of our teachings that we now have, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Nectar Devotion, Nectar Instructions, like that. <clears throat> In 19... And from 1921 to 1924, 25, he did circumambulation of Navadweep according to the, the path that Lord Nityananda took by who showed, showed Jiva Goswami what is that path. Uh, when he was on the Parikram path, he was attacked by a huge crowd who were throwing rocks at them. They didn't like the Vaishnavas. But he wasn't um, disturbed, he kept going. Okay, these are some of the details of his life. 26. Twenty-seven. Hmm. In 1927, he started Sajjana Toshini, the harmonist, the famous paper. There's a beautiful story in connection with that also. In 1928, he preached to thousands during a solar eclipse and, and established a diorama exhibition at the place called Kurukshetra. In 1929, he met one professor from the Ohio State University in America who came to meet him, and there was a nice example, a nice discussion. He challenged Bhakti Siddhanta, but Bhakti Siddhanta amazed him with his answers. And later on, he, when he was asked, he said, "I have met a very respectful and humble person." He began a program all over India to establish 108 parapitas, or footprints of Lord Chaitanya. His preaching increased tremendously. Devotees were coming. He had an army of sannyasis, and they were preaching everywhere, opening temples, doing diorama exhibitions, holding pun big, big festivals for pandals, uh, distributing Krishna conscious prasadam everywhere. He met with governors, viceroys, kings. He did a huge a diorama exhibit in, in Mayapur. Thousands came. He made the dioramas on the theme of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So much. Preached in Jayapur. Kumar Shetra, Simachalam, Kovor. He opened a school dedicated to his father, Bhakti Vinoda Kaur in Mayapur, which is still there today. In 
He established deities at Alanarth, sent preachers to the Delhi Math, to viceroys in England, in India, I'm sorry. Delivered lectures, so many things he did. Okay, so I'm going to have to... I'm going to read some of his words of wisdom. So tell me which one you like. Everyone has to, to choose one you like. So I'll read. These are, these are called Words of Wisdom by Bhakti Siddhanta. Number one, we are put to test and trial in this world. We are put to test and trial. Only those who attend the kirtan of the devotees can succeed. We are put to test and trial in this world. Only those who attend to the kirtan of the devotees can succeed. Number two, every spot on earth where discourses on God are held is a place of pilgrimage. Three, possessions of objects not related to Krishna is our main malady, mm -hmm. our main disease. Number four, let me not desire anything but the highest good for my worst enemies. Has infatuation and dalliance with the body in luxury increases, so the spirit wanes in service to the Lord. Mm -hmm. here's, here's one you'll like. Those favored by God find their path set in thorns. So if you're favored by the Lord, it's a rough path. <laughs> There is no peace or happiness in our worldly life. Circumstances create turmoil and annoyance. Chant the Maha Mantra loudly with attachment. This will drive away inertia, worldly evils, and pests. <laughs> Loud chanting of the holy name. Ghosts, people who bother you, and laziness will all go by chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That was soft, but a little loud, but I'm not going to do it loud because you might break the microphone. <laughs> He says, be indifferent to bizarre gossip. Stick firmly to your cherished goals. No lack of impediment of the world will ever stand in your way. Pay due respects to the extroverts of the world, but do not appreciate their manners and conduct. They are to be shaken off from your mind. A devotee feels the presence of God everywhere, but one averse to the Lord denies his existence everywhere. You cannot appreciate transcendental matters with the reasoning of the world. It is sheer nonsense to decry them with the measure stick of your intellect. To recite the name of Sri Krishna is bhakti. Life is for the glorifications of topics on Hari. If that is stopped, then what, it, what need is there to carry on life? Physical illness with Hari Bhajan is preferred to physical fitness without Hari Bhajan. 25 altogether. Number 16. Our, san our span of life on earth is short. Our life will be crowned with success if the body wears out with constant discourses on Hari. We are here on earth not to work as artisans for making built buildings with wood and stone, but to work only as messengers for the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Dev. A sycophant is neither a guru 
or a, nor a preacher. You know what a single fan is? Yeah. One who lives off others. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that correct? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> to transform the adverse desires of the jiva is the supreme duty of the most merciful. To rec rescue one person from the stronghold of Mahamaya is an act of superb benevolence, far superior to opening innumerable hospitals. Mm -hmm. Unless we are devoted to God, secularism shall not leave us. Look within, amend yourself, rather than pry into the frailties of others. In this world of Maya, averse to the Lord, trials and tribulations, only patience, humility, and respect for others are our friends for Hari Bhajan. Gaur soon to put his devotees in various difficulties and association to test their patience and strength of mind. Suc success depends on their good fortune. Here's one. When faults in others misguide you and delude you, have patience, introspect, find faults in yourself. Know that others cannot harm you unless you harm yourself. I wish that every selfless, tender-hearted person of the Gaudiya Moth be prepared to shed 200 gallons of blood for the nourishment of the spiritual corpuses of every individual of this world. To make a devotee in Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada said you have to shed 200 gallons of blood. That's what it takes to make a devotee. Okay, these are some things we can, today is his disappearance day. We'll be going to Salia tonight to give a class there to the, devo to the devotees or when whoever comes. Again, it'll be on Bhakti Siddhanta and at <clears throat> and my conference today at one, 10 after 1 today, I'll be speaking again and Bhakti Siddhanta. So today is a a day to remember this great personality. He is a Mahapurush. He, it was him that inspired A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada to take Krishna consciousness around the world. So sometimes we say it actually was Bhakti Siddhanta desire that brought Krishna consciousness to every town and village. And there's so many beautiful stories in his life. It's just, there's an ocean. Nice, very, very interesting, well-written, well-documented. Three sets of huge books by Bhakti Vikash Maharaj on the life of Bhakti Siddhanta. If you haven't read them, it's a, here's a good day to start. <laughs> They're just You'll, you'll hear stories and facts that you have never heard anywhere before in any lecture. It's the most amazing presentation. It took Maharaj something like 22 years to finish them, those three books. He, had a, he traveled all around getting information to, in order to put those books together. <clears throat> it's amazing. Uh, I read it many years ago. I'd like to read it again. <laughs> it's just so full. Okay, so thank you very much. <clears throat> Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Ganadara, Sivasari, Gaur, Bhaktivindam, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj Ki Jai.
His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Gaur Premanande. Hari Hari Bo.